Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Beep, beep, beep. Do you hear that? That's the fun bus backing up because we're not done with the fun. Now we're doing a tube microphone. <laughs> now we... Now we are doing a tube microphone review. This is the Lewitt LCT840. I did buy this with my own dollary dues. If you are interested in this microphone, it costs about $1,200. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. Also, all of my recording settings will be listed in the doobly-doo or the lower third, as well as the description. And now, let's talk about what comes in the box, but... I can't throw this, I'll break everything, so stand in box. What a surprise, you get that big hard shell storage case. You'll of course get the microphone, a foam windscreen, a shock mount, a five meter 11 pin to 11 pin XLR cable, the power supply and the necessary power cable, a little bit of documentation, and a sticker. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels really well put together. It has an all metal body. It has a multiple layer metal mesh grill covering the capsule. There is a bit of plastic that covers the tube and allows you to see it glowing. There are no switches as we move around the microphone. And on the bottom, you will find the 11 pin XLR port. Then we get to the super chunky power supply, which is made all of metal. On the top, you have vents. On the bottom, you have feet. On the rear, you have a power switch as well as the plug for the power port. You have a three pin XLR output. You have the 11 pin XLR microphone input. The XLR input does have a bit of wobble, but it's nothing too out of the ordinary, but I would like it to be a little bit tighter. On the front, you have a screen to display all of the settings on the microphone. You have a button on the left to engage the pad. On the other side, you have a button to engage your high pass filter. And then in the center, you have a dial to switch between all five polar patterns for this microphone. And just in case you care or not, this microphone is made in China. I'm not going to read all of the specifications to you, but if you want to read them, I will have them listed in the description. And I will also have the polar patterns and frequency response graphs up on screen, so you can pause and take a closer look at any of them that you're curious about. Pause it and look. Now spinning around the LCT840 on the omnidirectional pattern so you can hear how this sounds on the front and on the rear capsule. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle and here we are back at the front. Now I'm spinning around the 840 on wide cardioid. This is 90 degrees. Continuing around to the rear of the mic 180. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle. There we go. And then this is at zero degrees. Now spinning around on cardioid, this is 90 degrees on cardioid, continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear, continuing to the second 90 degree angle, there we go, and then ending at the front of the mic. Now on super cardioid, moving around to 90 degrees, this is the side, pretty dead there, continuing around to 180 degrees, another lobe of sensitivity here, continuing around to the second 90-ish degree angle, there we are, and then at zero degrees on super cardioid. And finally ending on figure eight, moving around to the first null area and 90 degrees, Continuing around to the rear lobe of sensitivity, there you go on the rear. Continuing around to the second null and dead area, there it is. And then on the front of the pattern. Now let's see how effective this multiple layer windscreen is at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how it's sounding. Now about six inches off with it pointed to the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now about one foot away from the microphone. Now about two feet away from the microphone. And now about four feet away from the Lewitt LCT840. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the 840 sounds about six inches away from my mouth on the cardioid polar pattern in a fairly well-treated room. 
And now here is how the microphone sounds about six inches away from my mouth on the cardioid polar pattern in a completely untreated room. Now, in order to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting shocks, I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now, because I'm incredibly annoying, I am going to tap on the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I am back on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect. The high pass filter is turned off and here is how it's sounding. Now I have switched on the first high pass filter which rolls off 12 dB per octave at 40 Hz. You should hear a slight difference in the very low frequencies, but the body of my voice should still be there. That is the first high pass filter. Now I have switched to the second high pass filter which rolls off 6 dB per octave at 300 Hz. This will be much more noticeable because it rolls off into the audible frequencies in my voice. This will be useful for some people, but there you go. That is the second and much more aggressive high pass filter. Now I want to see how the pad is engaged. So currently I do not have that turned on. Now I have switched on a minus 10 dB pad. You heard a little bit of a click in the very low frequencies going ahead and engaging minus 20 dB, another low frequency hit, and then going back to zero dB, rolls back gradually, so no really loud pop there. I think that's a pretty nice implementation. Now I wanna see if the provided foam windscreen has any impact on the tone of the recording. So right now I am six inches off of the 840 without the provided foam windscreen installed. And now here is how the microphone sounds with the provided foam windscreen. Do you hear any kind of difference? And for good measure, here is another sample on the LCT840 without the provided foam windscreen. And here is a second sample of the LCT840 with the provided foam windscreen. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now I want to include a couple samples using this mic through some higher end outboard preamps. So I'm running the 840 through a mic splitter that is then running into the Warm Audio 73 EQ and the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II. The WA73 has the gain set at 40, the EQ is disengaged, and the output stage is set at zero, so we are not attenuating it. That is running line level plus 4 dBU into the Universal Audio X8, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. The LA610 Mark II has the gain at plus 5 and the level at 4, EQ disengaged, compressor limiter disengaged, also running plus 4 dBU line level into the X8, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. That should be enough switching back and forth for you to hear this with a couple of pre's. There you go, let's move on. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a bunch of other mics that are available so you can hear how this stacks up against the competition and determine if this is the right sound for you. Starting on the LCT840, six inches away, connected to the Universal Audio X8, gain is set at 34 dB, and here is how it sounds. First up, we have the Neat King BV2, which is a solid state condenser mic. I am six inches off. My gain is still set at 34 dB. This microphone costs about $170. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. And let's jump back to the LCT840 and do a bunch more. Back on the 840, nothing has changed. I am running this in linear mode, so no high pass filter. Let's jump to another mic. Now I am on the Rode NT1 5th Gen. I am six inches off. My gain is still set at 34 dB. This microphone costs about 250 bucks. Let's jump back to the LCT840 and do a bunch more comparisons. Back again on the 840. I am also not running a pad on this thing. So that's the 840. Let's hear some more samples. Now I am on the LCT440 Pure or Pro. I am six inches off. Gain is still set at 34 dB. This microphone now goes for 290 bucks. I think that's an increase. 
But here is how this sounds compared to the 840. Let's do some more comparisons. Here we are on the 840 again, as I mentioned, running into the Universal Audio X8, 34 dB of gain, 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. Let's do some more comps. Now I am on the Shure KSM32, 6 inches off, gain still set at 34 dB, no pad and no filter engaged. This microphone goes for 600 to 650 bucks, and here is how this sounds compared to the 840. Let's do a whole bunch more. Back on the microphone we're reviewing, I have nothing else to mention or discuss. Check the lower third, let's go to another one. Now I am on the Lewitt Pure Tube. I am six inches off, gain at 34 dB. This is a cardioid only tube condenser microphone. This ranges from $1,000 to $1,300. And here is how this sounds compared to its older brother, I suppose you could call it. Let's do some more. All right, here we are on the sixth palate cleanser. We are nearly halfway there. This is the 840. Let's hear another mic. Now we are on the Austrian Audio OC818. I am six inches off. My gain is still set at 34 dB. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. Check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post. This microphone goes for about 1,250 bucks. And here is how it compares to the LCT840. Let's do some more comparisons. Now we are at the midpoint of the comparison section on the 840 for a palate cleanser. Clear out your ear holes. Let's do some more. Now we are on the AKG C414 XLS, 6 inches off, gain still set at 34 dB, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. This microphone costs about $1,320, and here is how it sounds compared to the 840. Let's jump back to the 840 and do some more. We are over the hump, and this is the 840 again for another palate cleanser. Nothing has changed. Let's do some more. Now I am on the Sony C100, which is a two-way microphone. I am six inches off. My gain is still set at 34 dB. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filters. This microphone costs about $1,400. And here is how it sounds compared to the 840. That is enough on the Sony. Let's do some more comparisons. I am still six inches away from the LCT840. Linear mode, no pad. Yep. That's enough talking on this. Let's hear some more microphones. Now I am on the LCT940, six inches off, gain at 34 dB, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. The FET tube circuit mix is halfway in between, so we are hearing half of each. That is the big differentiating factor between the 940 and the 840. This mic costs around $1,800, and here is how it sounds compared to its simplistic little brother. That's what people call me. Are you sick of me yet? Because I am sick of me yet. And this is me. <laughs> that makes no sense. On the 840. Check the lower third. Let's go to the next one. Now I am on the Telefunken TF51, a multi-pattern tube condenser mic. I am six inches off. My gain is at 34 dB on cardioid polar pattern. This microphone goes for about $1,900. And here is how it sounds compared to the 840. Let's hear some more. All right, can you guess? I am back on the 840. Exactly the same settings. Big surprise. Let's go to another microphone. Now I am on the LCT 1040, six inches off, gain at 34 dB, 100% tube, warm setting, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter. I think I got everything. This mic costs about $3,500, so a lot more. But here is how this sounds compared to a microphone that's a third the price about. There you go. That's enough of this comparison. Let's do two more, I think. All right, we are on the second to last microphone, I think. So this is your penultimate palate cleanser. Get a good vibe for it, a feel for it. Let's go to the second to last mic. Now we are on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. U87AI, I am six inches off. My gain is still set at 34 dB. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filters engaged. This microphone goes for $3,700.
This is more of a fair comparison, but still not a fair comparison. But here is how this sounds compared to the LCT840. This wasn't the last one. Let's go back and do one final comparison. What? Wow, that last microphone was the U87, but it wasn't the last microphone. This is your LCT840 palate cleanser. Can you guess what the last mic is going to be? Let's go to the last mic, right? And finally, we are on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann. U67 reissue. I am six inches off. My gain is still set at 34 dB. I am on the cardioid polar pattern pattern with no pad and no filters engaged. <laughs> this microphone costs $7,900. <laughs> what? I still can't comprehend it. This is stupid. But here is how this microphone sounds compared to a microphone that is $6,700 less expensive. So this is a fair comparison. There you go. That's the U67 against the 840. That is enough of the comparisons. I am done. Let's go to the music test. in my life but I just wanna make sure I'll eat pizza on the day I die I know it may sound depressing and morose but it's a realization I came to you can't eat pizza every day needs to be special spread it out so on the day I die one two three pepperoni pizzas who knows it's decades down the road fingers crossed Let's not focus on my mortality. <laughs> Let's just go to the conclusion, please. It may have taken me about three years to get around to reviewing this microphone, but this is one of my favorite sounding mics from Lewitt. And first up, as far as pros, the microphone offers five really great sounding polar patterns. For a tube microphone, the self noise of only 9 dBA is quite impressive. It also does a pretty darn good job at plosive rejection. And I found both of the high pass filters on this microphone to be very usable. And then as far as cons, number one for me is the lack of a firm microphone clip in the box. That is something that's really useful when you're miking up something in a tight space like an isolation cabinet. You can buy them as an accessory, but for the price of $1,200, I would have loved to have seen one of these clips alongside the shock mount. On the note of accessories, the second con for me is also kind of a pro for Lewitt. Their modern day accessories that came with the Pure Tube and the 1040 are so good that going back to their earlier microphones, I just don't like the accessories as much. They're still great, they're still more than usable, but their modern accessories are so good, I want those instead of these. I'm spoiled, I guess. And the final con for me is more of an FYI because I don't think this impacts many people. I didn't notice this for two years until somebody pointed it out. But if the power to this microphone is shut off, but you're still routing the power supply out to your interface, it will capture a bit of noise. It creates some underlying noise. That's clearly not going to be an issue when you're recording the microphone. But if for some reason you are monitoring the power supply while it's shut off, it does have this underlying bed of noise, and that's something that you should be aware of.
And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the LCT840? As far as the overall sound, you get a full low end without it sounding too bloated or muddy, then you get a slightly more mid forward sound, and then you don't hear the same brightness characteristics that you have on a lot of other Lewitts, but it still maintains this really nice airy quality in the upper frequencies that doesn't come across as overdone or harsh or unsmooth. It is just really nice nicely done. On the electric guitar, I think it sounds pretty nice because the upper end does capture a lot of detail, but it doesn't come across as over boosted. On the acoustic guitar, I love it. You're getting a little bit more of a punchy midsection, but then you have that boost in the upper treble and air, and that just captures all of the detail off of the strings and makes it sound super lively, and I just adore it. Next up for singing vocals, that is my favorite application for this microphone. It just captures the mids so nicely. It gives you a little bit more punch there, but it's not overly boosted, so it doesn't sound congested or nasally. And then in the upper frequencies, it is so incredibly detailed. It captures so much nuance in the voice, but it doesn't sound like it's too much. It's not overly detailed. It's not sizzly. It's not harsh. It is just handled beautifully. And finally, for spoken word, I think this thing sounds fantastic. It offers plenty of support in the bass frequencies. You have a nice and forward and smooth midsection, and then you get this really clear treble and air frequencies, all while staying very pleasant to listen to across the entire range. Really enjoy this for spoken word. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Lewitt LCT840? Yes, I would, if you like the sound. I think this is a really nice sounding tube microphone. It does have a bit more mids than I am used to hearing from Lewitt, but I think it handles them so incredibly well. The one consistent that I hear from Lewitt mic to Lewitt mic is the air frequencies. This thing just has a shimmer in the top end, which is beautifully handled, doesn't come across sizzly, doesn't come across harsh doesn't come across unsmooth. So if that is a sound that you're looking for, I think this is a great option. I have to admit, at $1,200, this has a lot of competition. So do your research, listen to the other options that are available, and make an informed decision. But if you land on this microphone, I think it sounds great. There you go. That's all that I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go to give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. Videos like this where I buy super duper uber expensive microphones just to review them are made possible by people like these who support the channel at $5 or more. I really do appreciate them, and I appreciate you coming by and watching and listening. Thank you so much. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa. Boop.